All right, guys, one thing that I've been personally doing for my first meal of the day, I've been doing eight total eggs. I've been doing two whole eggs and six uh, egg whites. My first meal, I don't do any carbs in it, so just the, uh, the eggs, and I literally just top with like some uh, sea salt and some black pepper. So this is usually my first meal of the day. And again, um, I mean, personally, you can do egg whites, but eggs are so cheap right now that I just break open and separate the yolk from the white because I get five dozen eggs for like less than $4. So I figure this is probably a cheaper than buying the egg white cartons. But just showing you guys personally how I like to, uh, when you're kind of on a limited fat intake like me, being at 56 grams, I can't do a ton of whole eggs, but I do get in uh, the two whole eggs, the two whole eggs that I did here, and then six uh, egg whites. Showing you a little pre-bed um, meal here. I've been doing these two uh, Carb Master yogurts. Uh, so two of these is only three fat, uh, 10 carb, and I believe it's 18 protein. And I've been doing a scoop of, uh, I had cinnamon roll, Core Pro before this time I got chocolate. So I'll show you what I do there, but first I've been having my a uh, bag of uh, mini bag of popcorn. This is only two fat, 25 carb, three protein. And then here is where I do, I did the two yogurts uh, mixed in here, and then I did one scoop of the Core Pro chocolate. And I have two uh, 100 grams of strawberries in there. This is also a great recipe that you can like throw in the freezer for like 20, 30 minutes. It freezes up kind of like a, a soft kind of frozen yogurt. Really, really good. And then um, I have 20 grams of almond butter on here on just two lightly salted uh, rice cakes. So this is how I'm finishing up my macros. Uh, I am back for a little prep update, kind of get you guys informed on what the heck's been going on since I've been kind of slacking a little bit with videos, but uh, as you guys saw, I just had a bunch of clients competing uh, recently in the, um, in the NPC Night of Champions here in uh, Spokane, Washington. So especially like during peak week and stuff like that, I had a lot of clients meeting with for like posing updates, um, just adjusting things daily. So was really busy with that, so I kind of wanted to focus on client stuff, and then as soon as the show is over, get back to filming stuff for the prep. But before I get into that, I wanted to um, show you guys, I literally just got this package uh, in the mail. This is from, uh, it's called Fit Gear, so fitgr.com. Uh, it's a website where I just, every now and then, I'll get some clothing stuff on there. They have a lot of the, uh, if you're familiar with like Gasp, uh, tank tops and stringers and stuff like that and also I like better bodies Anyways, they had a huge like clearance type closeout sale where a lot of things were marked down to literally like 10 bucks And I was so pissed because I had a bunch of items in my cart that um, I left in there and all of a sudden I kind of got distracted and I came back and um, They were all gone So I had to kind of get some sizes that were a little bit marked down but I'm gonna check these out and see if this stuff fits and um, just kind of give you guys an idea if you're kind of interested in ordering this type of stuff sizing wise and things like that. I got a stringer, a long sleeve thermal and some compression type pants, which those are the ones that to me are gonna be kind of the riskiest ones because I've never tried on their compression pants. So I know with like Under Armour and Nike, sometimes the sizing is completely different for both. So. We'll see how those hey guys. So here are the uh, compression pants. They're kind of a gray and black, uh, better bodies. And then I have um, a better bodies gray. This is just a long sleeve thermal. And then this is just a white uh, gas stringer. So I'm gonna check the sizing on these. I had to go smaller than I wanted to in both of um, the shirts. So I'm kind of nervous, but the pants, I got the size that I wanted, so hopefully those guys, fit. So this is the, uh, the gas tank top, and usually I always get larges, and I all they had left was a medium in this white one. But the nice thing about the, the cotton tank tops is they can kind of stretch a little bit more, and these ones usually have a little bit more length, so this is actually able to fit into the, uh, to the medium. So 10 bucks for this, crazy deal. And then these, our uh, Better Bodies uh, compression pants. These were 10 bucks as well, which is crazy. 
Uh, this is a large, and I really, really like the fit uh, on these. And then we got one last, uh, the thermal, and I'll show you that next. All right, guys, and this is the uh, Better Bodies Thermal. Again, this was a uh, medium and definitely nice and fitted and snug. I was going to get a large, but uh, with these two, uh, the tank top and the, uh, and the thermal, just going to like wash them in cold and hang dry them. So I should make sure they don't shrink up any. But this was 10 bucks as well. So crazy, crazy steal on some, uh, some fitness gear. Right, is there a little back? Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna give you guys a quick little uh, glance at what my weigh-ins have been like. Um, just remember, for reference, the way that um, I've always done weigh-ins and the way that you should do weigh-ins is uh, first thing upon waking up, uh, go to the bathroom first, and then step on the scale, obviously with no clothes, and then chart your weigh-ins, whether it's on a calendar like I do, in your phone, writing down on a freaking piece of paper or whatever you want to do just chart those weigh-ins and so here's an example of what my weigh-ins have been doing this month so as you're gonna see i started um the month on the first october 1st who's my and my dog calendar by the way uh, i started the month at 214 pounds and then we fin we're almost at the end of october and we're down to 206 0.6 pounds. So we've had some big drops, but you'll see, you know, 213s and then 212s and then we went down to like 210, 208, and then now 206. So some really, really nice drops uh, in weight this month, which is, which is great because it, it allowed um, me to actually have my cardio reduced and it also allowed me to get five more grams of protein. <laughs> <laughs> uh, which is, hey, it's just like, I think protein is actually really, really great for help uh, satiety and help keeping you fuller and stuff like that. So and kind of adding a little bit more chicken or like tuna and stuff at night. So it's not much, but I'm just glad that I haven't, I haven't had to drop uh, my food since then. So I was just kind of a little glimpse so you guys kind of see um, kind of like my weigh-ins and where things were at the beginning of the month compared to now. So here's a little bit more statistical breakdown. I'm gonna show you guys and go over some more stuff in the next one. Right, so here's kind of going into some kind of little data stuff. Starting weight, 218 pounds. As of today, 206.6 pounds. And then so total pounds lost, we're at 11.4 pounds. And then that puts like an average of 1.4 pounds lost per week. Again, you're seeing the macros. I did get the five pound bump in protein, carbs still the same, fat still the same, uh, refeed macro still the same. And then the cardio, we took out the hit. So I just have the two uh, 15 minute sessions here. So that is where we're at, um, right? Little angle here so I can sit down and, and talk to you uh, vlog style. Anyways, like I said, you guys saw the current um, updates with the macros little bit of a bump in protein and took out the hit cardio so now just the two 15 minute low intensity sessions so the great thing about this is just I feel like I get to focus on just lifting weights and dieting which the lifting weights part I love dieting part sucks but again at least with flexible dieting you guys have kind of seen some of my meals and with my re especially on my refeed days is where I kind of feel like it's that one day per week where uh, I kind of like get a little bit more outside the box and go get the pints of like Halo Top or do some of the, uh, you know, frozen type pizzas, fit those in. I've been fitting in like servings of Skittles, uh, servings of Sour Patch Kids. Um, I just need that one day a week where I kind of feel like I can, you know, usually on normal week, on my low days, I won't fit that stuff in obviously because I'm not going to... It's just performance wise. I want to use like more whole kind of like um, higher volume type foods on training days to kind of stretch since I only have 230 carbs, but on a day on a refeed where I have 450 carbs, that's where and I'm not training on my refeed. I've, I've chosen to do my refeed on my rest day. Uh, it's just perfect on a Sunday. I'm watching football. I'm relaxing. It's just a time to kind of enjoy, relax, let my body recover and then take in some more carbohydrates. So um, other than that too, it's just kind of funny how it's, I've already lost, you know, 11 pounds and I feel like my, it's kind of hard to tell, but it's like 
I've even had people notice how much slimmer my face is already getting. So as I already feel like I'm already starting to lose so much fat in my face. And then this past weekend, I had my clients, you guys saw if you, if you watched it, uh, my client's NPC show, and I was actually able to wear an old pair of uh, guest jeans that I haven't been able to wear since last contest prep. So these are some kind of good things. Um, you know, losing all this weight, seeing your, your body change and everything like that. Um, we are officially uh, 24 weeks out tomorrow, which is crazy. So 24 weeks out is where typically my last uh, two preps in 2011 and 2013, this is when I officially started my preps. So I kind of have a nice uh, two month cushion on my past contest preps to hopefully in the end be you know a better conditioned version than I was in 2013 and 2011. Although 2013 I was in much better condition than 2011 so I'm hoping you keep this trend. I feel like for most I mean I'm sure it's the same for all bodybuilders but it's just the more time away from the stage you know building more muscle improving your physique I feel like every time um, I start dieting and start contest prepping. I just can easily kind of beat my former, you know, self in my last prep. So that's always something positive to look forward to is if you take the time to take a nice off season, focus on improvements, focus on adding some more lean muscle mass. The next time and I tell this to a lot of my clients, especially my first time competitors, I'm like, just wait until your next prep. You're going to be so much better than you were this very first prep. Um, I also wanted to get into, I and mean, that's kind of an update on everything as far as my prep. I will do, the cool thing too is the last physique uh, posing video that I did for you guys, I was like 212 pounds, I believe in that. Yeah, 212 pounds. And then this next, um, I'll do one within the next probably couple days or so. I do another check-in with my coach, Cliff Wilson, on Tuesday. So that day I'm gonna be taking pictures and stuff for him anyway, so I'll probably do a posing video. So it'll be a nice, it should be a nice change, or there should be some nice changes in my physique from the last posing video to this one, since there could be like a six to seven, eight pound, probably six to seven pound difference from that last posing video to, the, to this one. But I kinda wanted just to finish this, again, this is just gonna be a nice kinda updated vlog, um, nothing special in this video. Um, but I kind of wanted to cover real briefly um, my NPC show uh, experience um, just because I know I have a lot of other natural competitors um, that watch me and stuff like that. A lot of people always ask about, hey, Colin, do you think I should do like an NPC show? And so I just kind of wanted to cover that. And here's the thing, guys, like I live in Spokane, Washington. All we have is two NPC shows. We have the NPC Empire Classic and the NPC Night of Champions that my clients just competed in. And if you're not, if you're kind of out of the blue on kind of different organizations, uh, NPC is not tested. So anyone can take whatever drugs, clenbuterols, diuretics, every, anything they want, they don't test. As opposed to the shows that I do, uh, in the WMBF IFPA where uh, the day before the show, every competitor is gonna get poly uh, polygraph tested. Uh, the rules are you need to be, and I, this is kind of crappy because I'm most of us are like lifetime natural bodybuilders, but the rule is you have to be seven years drug free. So, and then again, if you win the overall, uh, you get urinary tested. Like for example, when I won in 2013, as soon as I won, I never had a chance to even go and talk to my friends or family. I was pulled off into a room and had a guy sit there and stare at me pee into a cup. So it is very stringent and, and I actually, I really respected that. So that's kind of the difference between, you know, natural shows and uh, NPC shows. And obviously I feel like especially for the men, when you get into like physique and classic bodybuilding now and just regular bodybuilding, the difference between a natural bodybuilder and an, uh, most NPC bodybuilders, you're going to see a much bigger physique in the NPC, which makes sense because it's not drug tested. But I had four clients, um, you know, go natural clients, you know, go into an NPC show and I did the best that I could to kind of let them know, hey, you guys are all going into a, this is a, you know, not a drug tested show. I mean, even on the female side, 
if you're pretty apparent with this, with the fitness industry, it's very well known that a lot of females are willing to take enhancements to kind of get an edge on the competition. So just kind of let my two figure girls know that it's a possibility. Um, you know, especially for the one thing I felt really bad was I had my one teen client who's 19 years old. Uh, he did the junior, uh, junior men's physique. So all the, all the competitors are 20 years old and younger. And I kid you not, I could spot like at least two or three of the guys that were already developing gyno around their nipples, which is a side effect of drug use, which to me is just pretty sad because a teenager at 16, 17, 18, whatever, whenever you start lifting weights, your teenage years are when your natural testosterone is the highest it's like ever going to be. Meaning if all you just get in the gym and eat and train, you're going to grow and you're going to grow at the fastest rate that you're ever going to grow. So seeing guys that already are kind of um, ruining that, that natural period of, of being able to make great natural gains and already starting drug use at such a young age to me is just kind of sad because I feel like a lot of these guys kind of burn themselves out by the time they get into like their mid 20s. Um, so that's just kind of my opinion. It was just kind of sad seeing that because I had my, of course, my natural client who, who I admit, and I told him before we even started, I'm like, you need a lot more muscle um, to compete. Bare none, even in a natural show, he, he needs more muscle, period. But it was just a night, and if you watch the video, it's like a night and day difference between his muscularity and all the other uh, junior guys in his physique class. And then um, going into like my other men's physique uh, client who is natural um for him it was kind of uh the judges actually he got, he did bad he got seventh place i think out of like nine or ten guys which we weren't happy with because he brought like his all-time best physique literally destroyed um the physique that he brought last year but the judges kind of knocked him down because they said he was too lean and i think they used the word stringy which is kind of another term that you could use for a natural on an NPC stage. So again, um, this is just kind of some insight for any of you thinking about doing NPC shows. I totally understand um, the value of, you know, doing a show that's like right in your hometown. You don't have to go and, you know, a lot of you don't have to go and pay for a hotel. You don't have to pay for traveling expenses. So you totally save a lot of money in that aspect. But I just think a lot of people if they actually take the time to go and try a natural show. If you are a natural competitor, I think a lot of times you're gonna have a better experience overall. Um, you will get a lot more stage time. A lot of these classes in the NPCs, you're lucky to get maybe two, three minutes. They go really, really fast because there's always a ton of competitors in these shows. Uh, whereas the natural shows, I kid you not, I've literally witnessed, I think it was like a 30 minute uh, novice bodybuilding um, prejudging. <laughs> so you get a lot more stage time. So again, it's just all about the show experience. I think overall, my clients had a great time on stage. And I really, really do love this new format, uh, format that they've done at our local NPC shows, where they actually, they kind of break it up into a morning show and a night show. And in the morning, um, they do uh, men's physique, classic physique, and figure. And all in this morning show, it starts at like 8.30 in the morning and it goes till about two. They do all the pre-judging, all the finals, all the awards, final placings, everything in that morning show. So you were done, I was done, able to go home at two o'clock. I didn't have any clients in the night show, which the night show was bikini and bodybuilding. And I forget what else, that's probably it. But then in the night bracket, they did their pre-judging, their finals, placings, all of that in the night bracket. So it's just a great way because like, for example, the show that I'm going to do next, I'll literally have to wake up at probably 4.30 in the morning, start getting my first meal in, and I'll be hanging around all day at the show until finals at night. And then I might honestly not get on stage until like 10 o'clock, 10.30 at night. So you just don't have to, you know, waste a whole whole entire day on the show. So anyways, guys, this was just my little, and you guys thinking about doing NPC shows, it's not a total need. It's not, I'm not trying to sit here and bash 
NPC shows. I'm just trying to like kind of educate people further on if you want to, if you're a natural going into NPC show. So that concludes this vlog. Uh, stay tuned. I'm going to try to get some training footage next. And again, another posing update in the next, uh, hopefully a couple days. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Totally forgot to give you guys a review of the birthday cake. Uh, ISO 100. I think I showed it in a previous video and forgot to kind of let you guys know um, what I thought. Freaking awesome. Probably one of the best tasting proteins, especially for a whey isolate that I've ever really had. So if you're a fan of birthday cake type flavors, I guarantee you will love it. So especially if you are dieting, then one of the main things too about this protein is the macros. Zero fat, one carb, 25 protein per scoop. So you're not gonna waste um, a ton of macros on your protein. And I also wanted to give, um, uh, I've been doing core nutritionals, uh, the pump combined with uh, Fury Extreme. So kind of a pre-workout stack. Um, I'm also using the HMB, but the first round I did um, crushed apple candy for the core Fury Extreme. And then I did sour apple candy for the pump just so I can mix them together. Freaking really, really awesome. Uh, especially the, the, the flavoring is freaking on point with these. Um, right now I'm currently using the uh, peach mango uh, Fury Extreme and the peach mango um, core pump. And honestly, the flavors of both of these um, products or whatever have been freaking outstanding as far as the flavoring. Um, I still am really enjoying, um, you know, as far as the effects, the pumps, the energy, focus, uh, all that stuff has been on point. That's why I literally ordered uh, more of it. But I will continue to uh, this kind of contest prep, possibly mix some things up. I do want to try, um, although I'm not sponsored by them anymore, um, Bear Performance Nutrition, I still really, really honestly um, love following Nick Bear, Preston Bear. So I know they're going to come out with some new flavors of uh, Flight. Uh, so I want to try that because that was an awesome pre-workout. And then also I really want to try their uh, Endo Pump, so their pump product. And they're, I know they're coming out with uh, whey protein. So hopefully if you guys have some, mac some lower macro protein, then I'll definitely jump on that too. But um, yeah, definitely just, for my main thing, guys, it's just so very hard. I don't know how many of you guys saw that recent John Meadows kind of prime nutrition type post where he found out like one of his products didn't even have like some of the ingredients that were supposed to be in it. So it's just in this day and age with supplement, the supplement industry, it's so hard to find companies that you can trust. So for me, I feel like right now, you know, core nutritionals, uh, Bear Performance Nutrition um, are just kind of two companies that I just, I know the main, the main people is just, it's not so much honestly just the products, but it's the people behind them, following the people behind them. Um, kind of, I don't know, you just kind of feel like you can earn, you can kind of judge somebody's integrity and trust by getting to know these people through, through, social, so, through social media, YouTube, all that stuff. So those are right now probably the two companies that I really want to uh, support. So that's my little uh, kind of supplement update for you guys.